everyone, welcome to our video tutorial for the snowflake cat bandana that you can see Melba wearing here. So I hope you enjoy it. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so to make this snowflake bandana, you'll need some yarn. Now I'm going on the finer weight yarn. I've got this way, this kind of tapey yarn that I've used um, a bit in other videos. I, I like how it works up. Um, it's a cotton acrylic blend, I believe, with some metallic through it. Um, it's, yeah, it's about a two weight. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to use this light blue with this, this flick through it to make up a snowflake. So you could use a, a um, heavier weight yarn, no problem. You'll just tailor the number of rows that you do. So this, how big you make the bandana is um, up to you. It's It's kind of... You know, within limits, you can, you know, do however many rows you want to make it how big, however big you want it to be. You'll need a crochet hook that corresponds to your yarn. I'm using three millimeter. You'll want a darning needle to weave in your ends. A pair of scissors. And optional to have a tape measure to have a an idea of your cat's neck circumference. Now for this one you don't need an exact measurement so if you've got a general idea of where your cat sits then this bandana is actually really easy to fit. We're just uh, it's we're finishing it off with ties so it's easy to fit. Now um, I'll include in the description box below a guide to standard cat sizing so you can just go by that if you um, if you don't have the cat with you or if you don't have a measurement. Okay, so to make this snowflake bandana, you'll need to know how to make a magic ring, um, how to make a puff stitch, so using double crochet, which is this part here. You'll then need to know how to make a chain, how to double crochet. You'll need to know how to half double crochet, which is this area here. These are in half double crochets. They can, optionally, these can be double crochets, and we'll talk about that um, when we get there. Um, and then from there, that's pretty much it. Um, then, you know, you'll size it according to what you need for sizing, and we'll be making these ties with these little sort of pom-poms on the end, little baubles on the end. Okay, and that's just using a puff stitch similar to what we used at the beginning here. So just to give you an idea of how this will work up, so we'll start here and we'll just work backwards and forwards. Okay, and then we'll make the ties. Okay, so take your yarn and make a magic ring. However you do that. And then we're going to... Chain three. Now that will count as part of our first puff stitch. So now we're going to just make the first puff stitch using three unfinished double crochets. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and stop. Do that again. So that's two times, so yarn over, pull through the first two. And then do that a third time. Yarn over, pull through two. And then to finish this puff stitch, yarn over, pull through all of the loops on your hook. Okay, so then we're going to chain three. One, two, and three. We're going to make another puff stitch, this time using four unfinished double crochets. So yarn over. Set your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Do that three more times. Three and one more. So pull through two. And then for, with these ones with four, you'll have one, two, three, four, five loops on your hook. And then you'll just yarn over and pull through all five. Okay, chain three. One, two, and three. And so you'll repeat that. Um, you want a total of five here. Okay, 
So one, two, oh, sorry, six. You want a total of six. Excuse me, six. So we've got two already. So you want one, two, three, four, five, six, separated by a chain three. So go ahead and finish your remaining four. So you'll be repeating the second one we did. Go ahead and, and finish off your remaining four puff stitches, separated by a chain three. And I'll meet you once I've done mine. Okay, so I'm just placing my last puff stitch in my ring. And as you work, you might have to really, sh you know, shimmy those around to fit all of your puff stitches into the ring. It'll be a bit of a tight squeeze in there. That's four, one, and one more. So it'll be, yeah, quite a tight squeeze, but then you'll just close your ring. Let me just pull that back out for a second. So close it up nice and tightly. And obviously we won't be slip stitching to join here. So you've got, that's your beginning area. So just as it's done there. Okay. So then we're going to move on. So we're going to chain three. and turn and then we're going to place two double crochets into that chain space okay so that's that three chain space so one and two and then we're going to chain two and then we're going to place two more double crochets into that chain same chain space Okay, so we've got two double crochets. So this this first chain doesn't count as a double crochet. Okay. So then we've got two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. Okay, so we're just going to repeat that. So two double crochets in the next chain space. So this is row two, and it's the row of twos. Okay, so we've got two double crochets, two chains, and two more double crochets. One and two. So then we're just going to repeat that in the next three chain spaces. So go ahead and do that. I'll finish that off camera. So two double crochets, chain two, and then two more double crochets back in the chain space. So I'll meet you after I've finished that. Okay, so I've finished my last set there, and we're just going to double crochet into the side of that puff stitch. Just to be symmetrical with the chain three at the beginning there. Okay, so that's row one. We're going to move on to row two. So chain your three. And turn. Now we're going to be working into the chain spaces, and in between... So in this stitch here, so in between your two, your sets, your two, the two sets there, you've got a stitch and we'll be working into that as well. So um, this is the row of threes, row three. So you're going to place three double crochets into that first chain space. That's two and three. Chain three. And then three more double crochets back into that same chain space. Two and three. And in between, so in this stitch, or in this chain space here, so you can either, either way, I, I prefer to work into the chain space, but you could work into that stitch if you wanted to, okay? So that, that, uh, that double crochet you could work into there. And I'm gonna work into that space so we're always working into the space, and that's a half double crochet into that space. The next chain space will be three double crochets, two and three, chain three, and then three double crochets. So you can kind of see how this is going. Now into that 
space in between the sets, half double crochet, and then continue on. So continue doing the same thing all the way around. So in the chain spaces, so in between the double crochets in the previous row, you'll place your three, chain three, three, and then in that space in between the sets, you'll place your half double crochet. Okay, or if you're placing it into the stitch, you can, you can do that too. That's also fine, whatever you prefer there. So I'll meet you once I get round to the end of my row, and uh, I'll meet you shortly. Okay, so I've just finished my last sets of three there. Set of three, so three, chain three, three. And then I'm going to half double crochet, sorry, double crochet into the top of that chain from the previous row. So double crochet. So this is how it's looking so far. Okay, so now from here, so you're going to just continue to repeat um, this, the idea or the principle of this third row. So row four, so you could stop here. If you're using chunkier yarn than me, or you've got a really small cat, you could stop here, okay, and skip forward to making the ties. Otherwise, um, if you're using a finer yarn like the, me, or and you've got kind of an adult size cat, you'll probably want to continue on. So you'll chain three and row four will be the row of fours. Okay, so you'll be placing four double crochets into that chain space. Two, three, and four. You'll chain four. So this is the pattern that it's going to go in and then four double crochets back into that same chain space. So we're just working in exactly the same way from here on out but each time we, so when we move to the next row, so row five will be the row of fives, row six will be the row of six, okay? And then we're going to half double crochet into that half double crochet from the previous row. And then our sets of four again. So four double crochets in that next chain space. Three and four. Chain four. And you get the idea. So I'm going to finish off that this row so that you can see it's starting to look like a snowflake well and truly now so I'll finish my next four I'll half double crochet on top of that half double crochet from the previous row and I'll finish my sets of four in each of the chain spaces and then I just double crochet into the top of that chain from the previous row okay and then you can go for row five row six so on this one I went up to row six so the, these are the rows of sixes. And in theory, you could go, you know, seven or eight. Um, but probably, depending on the, you know, the size of your cat and the yarn that you're using, probably up to about row six. And you may stop at row four or row five. Okay, so it, once again, so I've, that's the, this is f the fifth row here. So these are five double crochets separated by a chain five, five double crochets, half double crochet into the half double crochet from the previous row. And then, you you know, six, you can do six as well. Okay, so this is six, chain six, so that gives me the little points on the, star, on the snowflakes. Chain six, six, and then half double crochet. Now, if you're finding that the half double crochet is getting too tight, you can do double crochets once you sort of reach these, these uh, bigger rows. Okay, so you can start to half, uh, start to double crochet instead of half double crochet in those spaces. So yeah, hopefully that's um, pretty clear. I'm going to finish off this row four with my sets of four, four double crochets, and then chain four, and then half double crochet into the half double crochet from the previous row, which is my yarn which is here yeah. 
And like I said, just just don't don't hesitate to change those to double crochet if they're getting a bit tight as you expand the rows. Okay, so I'm going to finish off this row. I'll come back and we'll start row five together. Um, and then I'm just going to leave you, well, pretty much from here, I'm just going to leave you to continue on. I think you've, you've probably got the pattern by now. Row five will be sets of five. Row six will be sets of six. If you're going above that, you just continue the increase. Now, um, you know, there's going to be a limit. It might start to misshape after too many rows, but um, up to about row six or seven, you'll be, you know, you'll, you'll be fine. So, um, yeah, keep on going and I'll meet you at the end of this row. Okay, so I'm at the end of my row four. So I'm just going to place that half double crochet into the top of that chain. Sorry, that, that double crochet into the top of the chain. And then chain my three and turn. And then I'm up to row five. So it's sets of five. So five double crochets chain five and then five double crochets again and then my half double crochet or if it's you need a bit of extra height a double crochet in that that half double crochet and then you'll just move around repeating as many rows as you need so I'm going to go up to six rows so I'll see you once I've finished that okay just to come back quickly here I'm in my row of sixes which will be my last row and I'm placing double crochets in these in between spaces just to just make sure that you don't misshape your work if it's too tight it might not lie flat okay so I'm doing double crochets in there now so I'll continue on in my row six and I'll see you shortly okay so there I've finished my fifth my sorry my sixth and final row so you might be continuing on a little bit further but for me that's definitely big enough now we're going to create um, the tie on the side where you've finished. So um, we'll create it just continuing from our work from here, but on the other side we'll have to tie on. Okay, so um, start your first tie. So you'll just be making a chain. Now I chain 50 to get the length of ties that I want. So I want to have enough to tie around Melba's neck and make a little bow. Okay, so for me that's 50 chains. So yours will be however it is many it is for you. So you just take into account the the distance that you've got here and then you know how much you need to tie it, okay? Bearing in mind your cat's neck circumference. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and chain 50 and I'll meet you once I've done that. Okay, so once you've got your chain that you need for your ties, we're going to um, create li little, they're only optional. If you don't want to create these little bobbles on the end, then you don't have to. But if you want to, then chain th an extra three. And we're going to do a puff stitch. So the same as we did here at the beginning, we're going to do that into, so into the third chain. So one, two, three. We're going to yarn over, insert our hook. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So just that half finished double crochet. And we're going to do that three more times. So a puff stitch with four unfinished double crochets. One more. And then yarn over, just get some more yarn. Yarn over, pull through all the loops. Then we're going to chain another three and then we're going to do the same thing okay we're going to work into that same same chain so place your hook in there and do another set of those that those four unfinished double crochet so another another puff stitch in there And then we're going to, so then find the next stitch down and you're just going to slip stitch into there or the next chain, next chain down and just slip stitch into there to make your little bauble. Okay, so then you might just have to shape it around a little bit and you can use your, use your needle as well when you're weaving in these ends to just shape it a little bit more and then just yarn over pull through
So that's your first tie and little bauble. And then just shape it around. Okay, so then we're going to tie on to do the, the second tie. So, so you'll tie on in the equivalent place as this one has started. So it's going to be uh, so it's going to be just at the base here of this last set. Okay, so you'll tie on. Now how I tie on, so I just you can do it however you do it. I just simply pull up a loop and chain one. And then I just pull on the others. I don't tend to tie knots or anything. If you if you want to slip stitch, uh, sorry, slip knot onto your hook and do it your way, then do it however you you like. And then you're just going to chain the same number and repeat the same process for your second tie. So I'll meet you once I've done that. Okay, so I've just finished my second tie there. So I'll just yarn over, pull through, and shape my little my little bauble. So when I said that when you can you know use your hook sorry your your needle your darning needle just to shape your bauble a little bit more so that's what I do to one when when I'm um, weaving in my end I'm also kind of shaping my little bauble so you can use it to do the same so I just secure my tail and just tidy up my little my little bauble a bit. So I'll go through to the other side. I'll just close up this little gap here. And let's do one more of those. Bring that across here. And then you'll just, then it's just a matter of weaving in all of your other ends. And I'll just pre place my, my tail end down and through into the bauble. And then just snip off the excess. And I'll just place any little tail end just back inside the bauble. That's nice and neat. Okay, so you'll go ahead and do um, your other your other bauble end, and then you'll weave in all your tail ends. So you'll only have a few in this project, which is always nice. So where I just weave in, you know, into double crochets, it's quite easy to weave in. So I just weave in and uh, double crochets here. Okay, so you'll go ahead and, and finish that off, and I'll do the same, and we'll finish off together. Okay, and there it is, your finished snowflake cat bandana. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I think this one is super cute. It, uh, yeah, it looks super cute on. So um, please send your photos along to catventurers.community at gmail.com, or you can tag us on social media at catventurers.crochet. It just makes my day to see your photos, so please send those along if you have time. And uh, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel, and we hope to see you soon. Thanks very much. Bye. Hey, Milba. How are you doing, sweetie? Who's that, Milba? Who's that? You want to go? Yeah, she would look at the camera. Yeah, she would. Hi everyone and welcome to our video tutorial for this snowflake cat bandana that you can see Melba wearing here. So I hope you enjoy it. Please like, share and subscribe. And <laughs> she's off. <laughs>